Hello, how are we doing today? It's nice where I'm at. It's about 45, 50 degrees. Nice. A little windy, but nice. Well, today I'm working on trying to get the sulfur smell out of my water. I had previously tried an anode inside of the water heater and that didn't work. And I've been thinking about it for the last two weeks and I think I may have come up with a solution to the problem. So let's get into it. The infamous pump house and the ever-present problem of sulfur gases and smelly water. Normally it floods all over across the bottom. That's one reason why I'm moving this stuff out of the way. So if it does flood the bottom, it will be all right. So in theory, the water comes in, goes up into the tank, and it's got little plastic balls in it, like ping pong balls with holes in it. And hypothetically, there's air in here and the water splashes across the balls. And when it does that, the sulfur gases get released. And there should be something like this in there. And this has got a float that goes up and down and supposedly pinches off a valve. So when it fills up with a bunch of air, the float goes down because it rides with the water level. And that means the gas comes up, out, and out this tube and away. And in theory, it should always have some air in there. And the only thing I can think is that there's something not right with this. Because this is a pressure release valve, like a car tire. And if there's a certain amount of air in here, nothing should come out. But water comes out. So that means there is no air in here. And I'm thinking that's what's causing my continual problem with the gases. So I'm going to take this apart and double check this. And I've got some stuff. I'm going to increase this and put this down a lot lower to make sure there's air in there. The last time I worked on this, I designed it so I could take this thing out. So I can turn the water off that's going into the tank. And I can, let's see, turn the water off that comes here. So turning that off means there's no water going to the house. Sorry, the audio seemed to have gone out, so I might be doing voiceovers for the whole video. So I've got two quick disconnects for this PVC pipe, but I'm gonna need to get some channel lock pliers to get those undone. And these are pretty cool fittings too, because they will let you separate the two pieces of PVC pipe. There's an O-ring in there so that you can disassemble something and assemble it back instead of cutting a pipe and gluing it back together. There's a little water pressure in the tank and the water sprays out. But the tank's going to have to be completely empty before I can remove it from the pump house and do the work on it. This is the second of three disconnects that I have. And I have a cheater pipe that I made that will allow me to uh, connect the water back up and supply water to the house while this tank is out. And there'll be more water coming out of that pipe also. This is my bypass pipe that I made. Like I said, it will end up coupling in the back and coupling in the front and just reroute the water from around the tank that's supposed to get rid of the sulfur gases. So here I am trying to lift this tank out, but it's full of water and too heavy, and I can't lift it over the other PVC plumbing. So I'm gonna have to drain this all the way out first. So I'm taking off the last quick disconnect at the base of the tank, and that's gonna let all the water run out. So I hope you can see all that water coming out of that quick disconnect. It's just gonna run out onto the floor. 
So there's a round hole in the bottom of the pump house and all the water pipes leading out go through there. And the bottom of it is just dirt. So the water can easily drain back into the ground there. I'll finish attaching this bypass pipe and then I can turn the water back onto the house. There's a small amount of water that's coming out of this quick disconnect, but in the big picture, it really doesn't matter anything because this is only temporary and hopefully within an hour or so, I'll have everything all back together. I'm pretty sure I had some great words of wisdom, but basically I'm going to take this to the carport and work on it there. So you saw me take the tank out of the uh, pump house. What you didn't see is that the tank fell over and of course broke the pipe off and I've looked around and I've got some of the fittings and I've got some more pipe but I don't have a T so I will have to get that but that led me into going through all my PVC pipe so I just thought I would show you how I organize things I've got a Tupperware container and it's got the three quarter inch connectors in the very bottom and then I've got some loose stuff thrown on top this is everything that's over an inch and a half. These are all my inch and a half connectors. These are all my inch and a quarter connectors. I was doing a long run and I bought a bunch of these connectors. That's all my ones. And these are all my odds and ends of one inch. Elbows and whatnots, end caps. But of course I don't have a T. And the last thing I've got, they don't take up much room, my half inch. And when I was in the well, I was talking about um, the O-ring and the way these two pieces fit together to make a seal. I would recommend if you're doing odd things that you go ahead and get more than one. Because if something were to break or if I were to need an O-ring, now I've got a couple of spares. If you're renting or doing a, a quick fix, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're buying a house or you're gonna live forever in a house, you might as well plan ahead. And like I said, if something goes wrong or I break something, I've got spares. And then, uh, just to FYI, I got those all wet and nasty. I've already sprayed them down with WD-40 because I don't want them to rust. And this is what I'm going to replace, and I'm going to add something that's a lot longer. So I went through my half-inch connectors and got two threaded pieces. I've still got to uh, open up and glue it. And the last thing I was going to say is, if you've got the purple stuff, try to keep track of that. That stuff always manages to leak, and it always turns your fingertips blue. I always usually have a rag or something close by whenever I'm working with PVC pipe. But this project is not going to get started again until I go get probably two or three teacup links. So that way if I screw something up, I don't have to run to the store again and get it. So we'll pick back up with this once I got those T-couplings. And let's, and let's get started on this. I'm gonna take this broken piece off first. There we go. It wasn't as tight as I remember it being. And there we have it. And the inside of this is filled up with these plastic balls. And the idea is that the water runs in, hits these, and these agitate the water and it causes the sulfur gases to come out. Now there should be a float inside here that rises up and closes this up. And I don't think it's working right. I'm gonna replace this with something like this. And I'm gonna make sure there's plenty of space. So if the valve comes all the way up, there's no way for the water to be there. 
So I've got a piece of PVC pipe that I can thread onto this, a piece I can glue in there, a piece I can glue on the end that will screw onto here. Got my glue I'm going to shake up. So I'm going to dry fit that and it fits fine. We've done this before. A little glue on here. Some glue on the inside. I'm sorry, this is half in and half out of camera. Should have done a better job. Squeeze the two pieces together. Wipe excess glue away. Same thing on the other end. Dry fit, fits fine. Glue. Plenty of glue where it goes in. Swish, swish, swish. Give it just a second. Spin as I turn. Hold the pieces for a minute. And wipe the excess glue away. No puddles any place. Now I'm going to put some fresh Teflon tape on there before I screw this together. The only rules I know for Teflon tape is wind it up in the direction that it screws on and make it thicker the farther away it is from the end of the threads. And once you have it where you want it, you just pull it tight and it'll tear off. Now we just take our piece and we'll thread it on. We've got to do the same thing on this end. Now we're just going to turn it into that. When I put this back together this time, I'm going to make sure I get plenty of Teflon tape around those too. Just to make sure they're not leaking air anyhow. I have cleaned this surface real good. That's where the O-ring ends up hitting. And you can see this is going to go in a lot farther this time. And it'll be the same way again. I'm going to use this hole. I'll tighten this down. A small amount of Teflon tape on these this time. So the gray section on top is all some kind of plastic. And these two plugs are also some kind of plastic. So I have to be careful when I put them in not to over tighten them. And I should just thread right back in. Here we go, that's flush. I'm just gonna repeat the same step again. Teflon tape. Put it in the hole and tighten it down. Both of those are on nice and tight. Now it's time to uh, fix our broke piece. There's nothing wrong with this pipe, but it's got a little bit of age to it. So I'm going to make an effort to clean up the end some. Most of the time I use the purple pipe cleaner when I'm doing stuff that's gonna be buried in the ground and that might have some water or dirt on it. Just to help clean the pipe up before I glue it. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this piece in.
I thought I'd show myself gluing this PVC pipe since I didn't seem to get a good angle of it when I was doing it earlier. It's all the way at the bottom. Turned it a couple times. As far as this top part goes, this is just a valve I put on the top to release it. And this is just here to keep dirt and dust from getting down in there. So I'm going to cut this off right with it. Dry fit it. If it's in there really nice. I am pretty sure this pretty comes out towards the front. So I'm going to put the valve towards the front. Glue. And I got the valve towards the front. I think I'm going to cut it right here and put one more splice and get rid of those two. Now I'm going to put this junction on here. I also use a grinder to clean up my cut when I was done. I'm going to get a piece off the end of this to use. Now I am going to glue this into here. And this is what we're left with. And this is what we had before. So I need to try to get this to the same length. So this pipe slid into about here. Which means that's where it would have been. Because we cut the pipe there and then we slid it on. Which I need, need to cut the pipe off about there. You're going to take your hands and um, break the pipe off like that. It's going to leave a jagged edge on one side. You're going to need to flush that up. That would be bad to leave it there. Now when that slides in there, we should end up with about the same amount. And if we did it right, it should be about like that so that's good now the next part will be the part that's broke off this part it's going to slide all the way until about to that mark right there and line this up where it broke like that I wanted to I could probably so I was having a really hard time trying to get these pieces to stay in place long enough to mark it Try to glue that I just in. decided to glue the rope pieces back together doesn't matter if I'm doing a poor job I'm just using it for measuring It only takes a second for that stuff to dry up. So if I know that's where the end is, I've got this lined up, those two are lined up. I can draw a line like right here. That's how deep it needs to be. Now I can go and cut this off. Now you would think that I would go ahead and glue this on, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this into here. And then I'm going to wait till I have this back in the pump house to glue this on. So that way, if for whatever reason, depending on how tight this is, if this needs to be rotated someplace to fit, Instead of changing how, how this is turned tight, once I've got it tight, 
I can just move this to fit. It'll it'll make a lot more sense once it's in the in the pump house. Once again, more Teflon tape on the threads before we screw it into place. This is just going to get screwed back on. I probably tripled my time when I broke that PVC pipe. Having to go to the store and get some T-junctions and then cut all the pieces and put it back together. But at least I'm heading to the pump house with it. So I've got the water turned off and I'm going to use it to disconnect to remove my bypass pipe. I'm going to end up with uh, more water dumping out and on the floor of the pump house again. I'm going to clean up the disconnects on this pipe and this will end up taking the water from the bottom of the aerator and then taking it up to the tank that has the sand in it to filter the water out. I'll do a quick turn with the channel lock pliers on both ends and then check to make sure it's not leaking once the water pressure is back on. Now the last pipe to go in is the one that takes the water from the well to the top of the aerator. And this is the one that I'll have to glue in. So I'll take this piece, put some glue on it, and make sure it's lined up to match the coupler at the other end. I can't remember exactly what the directions say, but I usually wait about 30 minutes for the glue to dry before I add the pressure from turning the water back on. Now I just need to connect the bottom and we'll give the glue a chance to dry. Well, there's my handprint and in some ways that's where this journey began. Back in September 28th, 1995, we had just recently bought this property and poured the concrete floor to the pump house. Okay, it's been over 30 minutes. So let's turn the water back on and see what happens. With any luck, we won't have any leaks and it'll solve the problem start with we'll turn the water on slowly it should be splashed around and hitting all the balls which should end up getting all the sulfur gases out of it yep smells like sulfur So in theory, that means there's no air coming out. There's no water coming out. So that means that tube that had the float in it should have gone up and stopped. But there should still be a space of air in there. It's that. It's that. There doesn't seem to be water leaking from any place that we made a connection. But I'll come back in a day or two and check. It'll take a day or two for the floor of the pump house to dry out anyway. I don't get that. I wish it was clear so I could see inside it and see. Oh, I wish I was confident, but I'm not. I'm just not sure. That's the worst thing when you think you know how something works, but you're not 100% sure you know how something works. Okay, right now the water is going in, but there's really not a whole lot of agitation. There should be a cavity of air inside of that tank and the water comes down. It hits those balls and everything gets agitated and the sulfur gases come out. Is that the thing fills all the way up with water. And even though it's on, you can see now there's not nearly the agitation. The water's still going in the bucket and it's still moving around, but Unless there's a pocket of air for the water to, there's not the agitation needed. Okay. Okay. Well, until the next time, like, subscribe, check out the playlist, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.